So number 14 then from the 2016 Advanced Tire Maths. So we're going nine marks for the geometry, the vectors, the lines and planes question, just lines in this case. We're given two lines here, one in parametric form and one in the symmetric form. And you have to show that they intersect and find the point of intersection for five marks. Well, in the plane, two lines will intersect as long as they're not parallel. And it's the same here. As long as they're not parallel, they've got the chance of intersecting. You can usually check if they're parallel just by looking if they're vectors. Negative 2, 1, 3 happen to be multiples, multiples of each other. 3, 4, negative 7, they're not. But in three dimensions, just because they aren't parallel doesn't mean they won't intersect. More often than not, two non-parallel lines in three dimensions miss each other, skew lines. However, they will always appear to intersect when projected onto a plane. They'll always share two coordinates. So all you've got to do is find those two coordinates and then check if the third one's the same. Well, it's an intersection, so it's a substitution. At the point of intersection, the coordinates will be the same on both lines. So, get this into the form suitable for substitution, which is to read x equals. So I'll need a parameter. If this equals this equals this, then it all equals some parameter. What will we call it? Well, I've called that lambda. So if we're going Greek, let's just take the next letter, mu. And we'll rewrite that then in this form, parametric form. If I've got room to squeeze it in over here. So, forgetting those x minus 3 would be take that across as negative 2 mu, so x will be 3 minus 2 mu, y will be just 1 times mu, but that will be y equals 8 plus mu, and z here will be 3 mu but minus 1, taking that across, z equals negative 1 plus 3 mu. Now, doing that gets you the first mark. In fact, it says doing just two of them gets you the first mark, but you need to get all three anyway to proceed. Now it's just, let's go ahead and find the x, y coordinates which they must share. So x coordinates. If the x coordinates are the same, then this 4 plus 3 lambda must equal this one, which is 3 minus 2 mu. I'll just rearrange that, maybe I'll pop this over, lambda mu. 3 lambda plus 2 mu equals negative 1. That's one equation. What about the y-coordinates? Well, this one has got 2 plus 4 lambda. And if this is to have the same answer, then this should give the same value, 8 plus mu. So that's 4 lambda minus mu equals, take that across, 6. There's another equation. Now, getting two equations in the two parameters gets you a mark. Now solve it. Well, you can get rid of mu just by doubling this equation and adding it. So 1 plus 2 lots of 2 would give you this then. 3 plus 8 is 11. They disappear, of course. 11 lambda would equal negative 1 plus 12. Double that is 11, which means lambda equals 1. And once you've got lambda, you can find mu from either of them. Say we use number 2 here. Then you've got 4 times, I'll put it in, 1 minus mu is 6. So 4 take away what? That would be 4 take away negative 2. Mu equals negative 2. Doing that gets you the third mark. But now comes the check, because of course two lines will share a point projected onto a plane. Is the third component going to be consistent with it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the z coordinates now. So Z1, that's from line 1 here, should be negative 7 times 1, which is negative 7. Z2, from this line here, should be negative 1 plus 3 times, and its parameter is negative 2, which is also negative 7. So I'll make a statement. Z1 equals Z2, which means lines intersect. Doing that gets you the fourth mark. Now it's just a case of getting the x and y coordinates and then you can state the point of intersection. So what have we got? You can choose either of them. So for x, just use this one, this is the first one that caught my eye. 
4 plus 3 times, that's got a nice wee parameter anyway, 4 plus 3 times 1, which is 7. y equals 2 plus 4 times, again, lambda is 1, which equals 6. I've already got z, so that means the point of intersection, just call it poi, is 7, 6, negative 7. Doing that gets you the fifth mark. Now for part B, calculate the obtuse angle between the lines. Because after all, there'll be two angles, which obviously are supplementary, add up to 180. They want the obtuse one, so just make sure you put that one down. Apart from that, it's just like the higher. Apart from identifying the directions, the vectors, the direction vectors of the lines. So I'll just call them this, I'll say U1 can be the direction vector of line 1. You can pick it out from the parameter part. U1 was 3, 4, negative 7. U2, the direction vector of this one, you can identify by these denominators. So that's negative 2, 1, 3. And in fact, there's two marks there. You get one mark for that one, and you get one mark for that one. In the marking scheme, it's got it written as multiples of the unit base vectors, i, j, k, but I don't believe that's necessary. That might just be a printing convenience rather than having to write these columns. But apart from that, it was just going to be cos theta is going to be u1 dot u2, the scalar product of them, divided by the product of their magnitudes. Or you could say the scalar product of the unit vectors. Now you can work them out at the side separately, or you could do all the calculation here. Well, I've got all this space, maybe I'll just work it out at the side. So what's the scalar product of u1 and u2? You could just do it in your head, but I'll just set it out. 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 1 plus negative 7 times 3. So that's going to be negative 6 and 4 and minus 21. So that's another 2 away, minus 23. That doesn't get a mark. It does get marks. That doesn't. Magnitude. Magnitude of u1 will just be the square root of, I think you could just jump in with the squares, can't you? Why not? 9 plus 16 plus 49. 74. And, oh, I'll just keep it in line. Magnitude of u2 is going to be the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 9. That's root 14. Getting the three of those gets you the next mark. So let's just find the angle. So theta is going to be the inverse cos of, feed it all in, negative 23 over the square root of 74 times the square root of 14. Press the buttons. And you get 135, so you get the obtuse one. 135.608 and so on, and this is in degrees. So just round it off however you like. I'll we'll just put down, maybe I'll just emphasise it. Obtuse angle equals 135.6 degrees. There's the fourth mark and the ninth mark altogether. So I've rearranged it with the missing letter. There, that must have been annoying looking at that without the N.